Welcome back to Turning Hard Times into Good Times. I'm your host, Jay Taylor, and I'm really pleased to have with me, once again, Doug Rowe. Doug is a portfolio manager and senior research analyst at Tocqueville Asset Management. He joined Tocqueville in 2003. Uh, where he is uh, a portfolio manager, uh, and prior to joining Tocqueville, uh, he uh, was a director of investment research at Grove Capital, uh, and also worked at uh, J.P. Morgan, Merrill Lynch, uh, and ING Bank, where uh, actually I first met up with Doug as I was working at ING at that time as well. Um, Doug uh, began his career as a mining and precious metals analyst in 1985 at uh, U.S. Global Investors, uh, and he has a, a Bachelor of Science in Geology and uh, Geophysics from the University of Wisconsin, uh, and also uh, a Master's degree from the University of Texas at Austin. Welcome, Doug. It's really good to have you with me again. Well, hi, Jay. It's good to be with you this afternoon. Good day. Uh, Good to have you with me uh, again. You know, you're, the Tocqueville Fund, I must say, um, got a warm spot in my heart for the Tocqueville Fund, my wife and I, because it's been pretty good to us. We invested a little bit of money in there in the early 2000s, and it uh, really helped helped us uh, fund our, our son's education through St. John's uh, College in Annapolis. And so, um, yeah, so we... I, I can't. I have to tell my listeners I'm not totally unbiased. I'm. I've been happy about your your fund's performance. And actually, though, uh, if you're to look at it, you, your your fund has performed very well. It's done quite well relative to a benchmark that you that you use. Um, uh, you know, I've, it's been tough for gold mining companies. But I see over the last ten years, you have a, a 5.19 percent. I think is what you've published uh, annual. Return during a period of time. Mm-hmm. I suppose you know you can take almost any time you want to make your case. If you wanted to fudge the figures, you could take a time that was probably right after, up until t- uh, the end of 2011, perhaps, or right, <laughs> or the middle right. of 2011, <laughs> and it would be beating the S and P at that time uh, frame very very dramatically. But it's been a tough, uh, been a really tough time. Uh, I'm not telling you anything you don't know, right. uh, but. Um, yeah, so how do you see this mining industry, the gold mining industry? I'm looking at now, Doug, I'm looking at companies. I'm talking about the household name companies, the Gold mm-hmm. Corps, the Newmonts, the Agni Legals, many of them which you have in your fund. These guys are, you know, they're, they're selling at prices they didn't sell at when gold was at $400 an ounce. And here we are at 1200 or they're close to that, 1170 today. And, you know, we're selling at a third you know, we're. I mean, it's incredible. We're selling at the price. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're go, yeah. Yeah. How do you explain it? What's What's well, going thanks. wrong? Thanks, Jay. Thanks for those comments too. And we're, we're certainly uh, happy that we could help with your long term financial planning. And uh, the gold was a part of that. And that's our approach. Really, is is the long term uh, investment opportunity in gold. And that's why we have some of the exposure we do have to uh, companies such as Gold Corp and uh, Ignico Eagle Royal Gold. Who, who uh, command prominent positions in the portfolio, but but I will say this, um, you know, as far as recent additions, um, it was last week we actually added uh, gold bullion uh, once again to the fund. We we went out and bought about ten thousand ounces of gold, which is the first time we've done that in about eight years. We, ha- oh, we have okay. about uh, one hundred and ten thousand ounces of gold in the uh, Tocqueville Gold Fund now. Mm-hmm. How many did really, you say? Uh, how many did you say? One hundred and ten thousand. Ounces. Oh, good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's a, it's the most prominent position in the fund. It makes up about 10, 11 percent of the assets under management in the gold fund. And our thought on that was, um, you know, we're we're thinking that, you know, gee, the gold price is really getting beaten up here. It's approaching the cost of production for the industry, and the best time to invest um, that I've observed throughout my career, and I've covered the basic materials and the gold sector through throughout my career is when you see the cost of production above the product price. And mm-hmm. uh, whether that's the oil market or the coal market or the lead zinc market or the copper market or gold market, it, the best time to, to buy into a sector is, is when that price goes through the industry's cost of production. And, and in some cases, we're, we're at that level, um, certainly for the South Africans who are challenged with their cost structure, they're, they have deeper mines to operate in. Safety is a, a greater cost for them. There's social costs. They'll face labor negotiations next year. Uh, so costs are unlikely to go down. 
um, and yet the price is going down. So it will put a squeeze on, on some of these mining companies, and those that don't have a balance sheet uh, are going to be really challenged. Uh, Barrick is going to be facing continued challenges, I think, through the next couple of years. Um, so we've emphasized those companies such as Gold Corp, who has taken on the capital spending over the last several years and now is in a position to harvest that capital spending by bringing on new mines and new production uh, to keep its costs relatively in control. Um, the royalty companies uh, are great business models. Uh, you probably have discussed that on the program, I'm sure, in the past. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, well, yeah, I would just, uh, I, I believe, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think your gold position, your bullion position, that is your top position more than any of the single companies. Right, that's right. That's right. I and, saw it was nine point thirty eight percent at September thirtieth. So you're actually t- a little bit larger than that now, perhaps. Well, that's right, and uh, mm-hmm. it, it was rather interesting. We don't have active trading in bullion. We we buy it and hold it. Uh, it's there mm-hmm. for the long term. And when we went out to source uh, some supply last week, um, we went to the bank that holds our gold, um, a large Hong Kong named bank, mm-hmm. and um, they would not. They did not want to trade with us because we don't have an active account. And we thought that was rather interesting that, um, you know, we presented them with an opportunity to, to sell us gold, but they were not willing to open up a, an account with us because we don't do active trading. Hmm. So it, it tells you something about the marketplace. I think that uh, I came in a little bit late on your earlier discussion, but um, the physical supply for gold is tight out there. Yeah. Um, you know, so well, it's been it's been in backwardation uh, at least briefly uh, recently. Last, it's been in last backwardation. couple of weeks. That's right, yeah. and, and that's not yeah. a typical occurrence. Yeah. And you know, part of that is the challenging markets that we're in. That these mining companies, um, as much as we've seen a lot of growth in the last couple of years, we're we're probably at peak gold production here uh, in 2014, mm-hmm. 2015. And with these gold prices, uh, management teams are going to have to make the, the hard decision to close operations, to put operations on care and maintenance, which which only leads to a tighter market down the road, as, as I'm sure you've discussed too on your program. Mm-hmm. Uh, exploration activity is is not currently going on in this marketplace. Mm-hmm. And uh, anything that's under development uh, is well capitalized. But no new development is getting underway. Perhaps somebody like Remarco can can, can initiate some uh, some uh, development program. But uh, if you haven't gotten your permits by now, <laughs> you're not building a mine. Uh, uh, it takes right. forever, doesn't it? It takes well, you know five, right. ten years. Five years is a is a very really quick mine. You don't build a, a mine in five years after you. I mean, it takes uh, until you, you discovery until production. Uh, it could be. Well, a lot of times that one company makes a, a great discovery and never gets into production. Ten, twenty years later, someone else comes along, picks it up, and puts it into production. Seems to be the way things go, as much as, uh, as much as often as not. Well, that, that's right, and you know, it's it's interesting. It's only getting longer um, with the permitting process and the requirements uh, that uh, mining companies have to uh, undertake in order to satisfy the various stakeholders, whether it's getting the social license or the the state or local licenses or permits or the federal government's uh, willingness to go and ha- go ahead and let a company operate. So it's only become more challenging, which uh, only should increase the price of gold in the long term. Yeah, it should, although I, I would mention, though, I think the difference between gold and some of the other, even silver for, for that matter, and certainly copper and some of the other industrial metals, metals that are base metals that are used in production all the time, is that there is a huge amount of above-ground gold supply that sits in vaults. Uh, like the 110,000 ounces that the Tocqueville <laughs> Fund owns, you know, I yeah, mean, there's right. it's it's not as if at some price there isn't available uh, supply out there. It's just that people hold it because they view it as money, I think. And so, to well, me, it's right. not as sensitive. So the notion that the mines were all to shut down uh, tomorrow, what is something like two percent a year or something like that increase in the gold supply? Uh, wouldn't be as dramatic as it would, say, the copper industry, where you have immediately there would be no supply and the price would have to go to the moon. But in any event, you're, it's it's well. Your your point is well taken, and it certainly makes sense to buy gold uh, at at these levels. It seems to me, and I'm I'm uh, grateful that you did. You mentioned South Africa and their issues. Uh, is there any room in the Tocqueville Fund to own uh, the platinum group metals? 
Well, we do have exposure to still water. And, okay. Uh, you know, people do think of that company as a, a palladium platinum producer, and uh, yeah. certainly they do that. Uh, they undertake that as well as some refining. Um, and our enthusiasm for that, that company and that, that stock is that uh, um, we think the dynamics of the platinum group metals um, is, is such that we will see higher prices over the long term mm-hmm. um, from the industrial demand as well as from the uh, geogra- geographic supply, with mm-hmm. most of the supply coming from Russia and, and South Africa. Mm-hmm. And here, Stillwater is in the United States, and so we have a ready access to supply that's not in maybe a, a threatened uh, geography. So we like that dynamic. They have a great resource um, and new management. So, you know, we're pretty encouraged by what's going on at, at Stillwater and think, think that's a, uh, a good way to get exposure to the platinum group metals. Right. You mentioned uh, the royalties companies. You've got Royal Gold with a 5.79% allocation and Franco Nevada 5.22% at your September 30th uh, quarter, quarter end. Those are certainly great companies. Uh, yeah, t- talk to our listeners a little bit about the advantages of a royalty company as opposed to a regular mining company. Yeah. Um, a little bit of a different dynamic in that uh, a royalty company does not have the same operating exposure that an operating mining company has. They will have exposure to the uh, asset of a of a ore deposit. Um, they have exposure to the gold price, but they don't have the operating exposure per se. And the, the business model in a simplified form is they provide capital to a mining company to to build a mine, and in exchange for that capital, they get uh, some type of interest from the production, whether it's a top-line royalty, a portion of production from the top, uh, or maybe some type of profit after some of the costs are incurred to produce that, that ore or that metal. Um, so there's different variations, but the, the appeal there is, is they don't have that operating risk. They can have a diversified portfolio of different royalties from different parts of the world um, that they will always have exposure to. If the mine is not operating, it doesn't mean that they lost exposure necessarily. Mm-hmm. Um, they would still have ownership to to that uh, asset through that royalty stream or through that contract that they initiated. So, And I think the notion of diversification is, is an important one where they can select their projects uh, um, with the capital that they're providing as opposed to a mining company. Once it's committed, it, it has to really for, uh, go ahead and, and develop the asset to its fullest. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, it's responsible for creating the, the ultimate value there at that, mm-hmm. at that ore deposit as opposed to a, a royalty company who's, who's really a partner with the uh, operating company. So, they are a partner, but they don't have to worry about sustaining capital either, do they, as, well, as the mining that's companies? that's another aspect. They, yeah. they don't have to worry about operating costs. They don't have to worry about uh, sustaining capital. They they aren't necessarily the ones negotiating with the country or the, the local jurisdiction about uh, operating um, the mine or, mm-hmm. or concerned about the social uh, issues that, that often creep up in the in the mining. So. Um, they're a little bit removed, and, and as such, they get a better valuation than operating companies. Mm-hmm. Um, they tend to have a valuation almost twice that of uh, the operating companies, and certainly that's the case in this market. And that, in part, explains the the uh, large weighting we have in the portfolio. Um, we've held those positions for some time. Uh, we initiated those positions at maybe a 2 or 3% level in the portfolio, and through time, they have appreciated to become a more prominent uh, oh. weighting in the in mm-hmm. the portfolio over time. So mm-hmm. we're long term investors. We don't do much turnover in the fund. We mm-hmm. try to do our research right up front and identify those companies with with uh, good assets and an appropriate management team to make the most of those assets. Mm-hmm. Um, and certainly uh, companies that are well supported by their balance sheet. Mm-hmm. Well, certainly, as I look at it, you know, between uh, your gold bullion and your two royalty companies, you were looking at about 20% of the fund right there in those very conservative assets. That, right. that should do well, though, nonetheless, with a with a rising gold price. Well, you know, um, it does because those, those companies do participate in a rising gold price. We do have uh, exposure to the, the smaller cap names as well. Some of those, 
companies that are, are going out and, and developing deposits. Almaden's uh, in the portfolio, International Tower Hill, which doesn't have a mine at this gold price, but we think in time. Uh, we'll see the, the right gold price uh, for its its mining activity to be uh, to be financed and justified. Uh, ATAC is another name in the in the portfolio, rather small at this point, but uh, they're on to a tremendous deposit we think in the Yukon. So some of those smaller names will get the boost from a higher gold price, but in a downward trending gold price, the way we've seen this past year. The exposure to bullion and the royalty companies has really served us well. We, they're a little bit less volatile, I think, than some of the other larger um, gold mining companies, such as mm-hmm. uh, Newmont or or, uh, or Barrick or even Gold Corp or Agnico mm-hmm. Eagle. Oh. So we we mitigate some of that volatility with that exposure to gold and the royalty companies. Yeah, it's uh, interesting, and folks, you might want to just take a note of, of some of the names that Doug mentioned, because if Doug Groh and his team are looking at these companies, uh, you can be pretty sure they weeded out a lot of others that uh, that, that you might not have to <laughs> waste your time doing the research on. Thank you for that, Doug, but of course, well, the best the best way to do it is to go buy the Tocqueville Fund. That's one way to do it, and then you can get all of what <laughs> all of Doug's hard work uh, to your benefit. So, But, you know, Doug, I want to ask you about another, um, I think there's another company that makes it into your top 10 uh is it torex torex yes, school right. yes yep. talk yep. to us about that one i i don't that's a, a name that i'm not familiar with well they have a uh, operation in in southern mexico that they're developing it used to be a tech asset that uh they they uh they bought about oh, four or five years ago um and in the process of developing that ore deposit, uh, they initially identified about 3 million ounces, but it looks like it's more like 5, if not uh, 7 or 8 million ounces. Hmm. Um, they are fully financed at this point, and later uh, next year they should be in, in operation and uh, producing gold. Uh, on a f- more commercialized basis, basis, it'll be 2016. But in the process of uh, building the mine and uh, developing roads and uh, clearing the area they have uh discovered more gold so it's it's a prolific area um gold corp has a, a mining operation uh not far from theirs um gold corp's operation will be running out of ore in the next several years and so there is some discussion in the marketplace that perhaps gold corp would uh, be interested in partnering or uh taking a greater uh involvement in the area through torex um so it's it's a it's a dynamic story. It's in that development stage at this point, and you probably have observed, uh, as have your listeners, those companies that are developing their operations don't get the full valuation until they've actually gotten up and running, mm-hmm. running their mines when um, they've generated cash flow and the marketplace actually sees that the mine works. So, as they go through that process in the next year or so, we expect to see a better valuation for uh, for Torex. Um, as they de-risk that project. Mm-hmm. Uh, just a couple of other names. We've got about three minutes left, Doug. Uh, El Dorado comes in at uh, your fifth largest holding at the end of the quarter with 4.82% uh, allocation. Uh, why, do you, why do you like that one? Well, uh, El Dorado has been uh, successful at um, building operations around the world. Um, they are well capitalized at this point. They've slowed down their their um, growth profile, their growth plans in the last uh, couple of years with the de- declining gold price. Um, but they are well financed for their projects in Europe. Um, and and while they do have exposure also to China, um, most recently they've indicated that they are interested in selling their Chinese assets. And I, and I think that's, that's probably the right move for them. Uh, China's not the easiest place to operate. Um, I think that uh, the realization of capital out of China uh, can be deployed in other parts of the, the world where there's tremendous values right now in this, in this marketplace. Um, I can see El Dorado uh, selling its Chinese assets and, and using those funds to, to purchase some of the cheap assets that are out in the marketplace right now. It's, yeah. it's really kind of interesting. As we get to the end of the year, Jay, you're going to see a number of companies have to reassess their resource at lower mm-hmm. gold prices, and mm-hmm. that will that will result in write downs. That will result in uh, lower valuations for a number of these companies. In some cases, that's already incurring. The market is forward looking and anticipating that write down. 
But tremendous values will be surfaced, and those companies with a good balance sheet, such as El Dorado or Gold Corp, um, will be able to to add to their portfolio uh, for the next upturn in the gold price. Um, mm-hmm. You know, so a good management team. Uh, they have been there uh, throughout the years. It, it's it's rather interesting. The the top names in our portfolio are companies that have management teams that have been in place for a long time. As you know, there's mm-hmm. been a lot of turnover in the industry. But companies such as Gold Corp, uh, El Dorado, Rand Gold, uh, Torex is a bit of a new company. Um, these are all management teams that have been in place for the last, um, well, uh, 10 years or so. Uh, Torex mm-hmm. is not that old, but yeah. uh, through most of their life in the last 10, 12 years. Yeah, well, management obviously is the most important issue uh, for people to consider. And, uh, yeah, you obviously you have to have some new management uh, geniuses arise over time, but uh, you're, you're best to look at those that have the track record, and I'm, I'm sure uh, that's a big part of your uh, due diligence as well. And you know these people, you talk to them on a regular basis, and uh, and that's the best way to go. I want to thank you very much, Doug. We're just about out of time, but I want to thank sure. you very much. I might just mention Yamana. I had Yamana and Rangold as uh, also in the top ten, uh, but it's uh, Tocqueville Gold. I guess Tocqueville Gold Corp. Uh, what uh, Tocqueville. What is the website that people should go to? Tocqueville Gold. It's uh, Tocqueville dot com. So www Tocqueville dot com, and that's T O C Q U E V I L L E dot com. And you can, you know, kind of wind your way around the website. There, different tabs would show you our different products. But there should be some information on the gold space um, that I think your listeners would appreciate and, and yeah. benefit from. Yeah, I think John Hathaway contributes some things there too from time to time, doesn't he? he writes some things on the gold markets as well. So he, he yeah. does. He's a regular writer there and author of, yeah. of some great ideas. The great ideas is absolutely right. Well, thank you very much, Doug, for being with us today, and look forward to doing it again sometime in the near future. Well, thanks a lot, Jay. Good to be with All you. All right, thank All you. Right. 